So now that we've set the stage for uh, some basic AI and behavior management, we've established uh, whether the enemy is unaware or aware of the player based on this uh, range finder, field of view, and line of sight, um, we can we can have some basic execute some basic behaviors. And what we'll do is we'll have the enemy wander around based on a nav mesh. So it'll be semi-intelligent, it'll avoid obstacles. Uh, and then if it becomes aware of the player, it'll pursue the player or move towards the player. Um, now, just a little bit of setup for this scene. I just wanna, I have a couple of things in here um, just to provide some contrast. I wanna point out, I've exaggerated these cubes just to show that they are rigid body cubes. Um, so they have our cubes with rigid bodies. Um, assigned to them. Uh, and we'll contrast that with, um, I have these objects on the outside called outer walls. Um, this pyramid is the dynamic objects. Then I have these other uh, interior wall objects, which are just cubes um, that have box colliders. They're just default cubes inside Unity. Um, we'll consider uh, these wall objects, both the interior uh, and exterior outer walls as uh, static objects. And, we're, and in my case, I have this grass object, let's say a ground object, I called it grass because it was green. Um, and in order to establish a nav mesh, we wanna make sure that um, uh, all the static objects or the objects that we want to uh, be accounted for in our nav mesh are set as static. And we can simply do that um, by selecting an object. In this case, I'll start with grass. I'll go to the inspector and I'll flip on static right next to the name, to the right of the name, we can flip on static. Now when we tell it to be static, um, there are you know, different filters that we can use to have you know, specific things um, uh, marked as static. We're really most interested in, in the navigation static, uh, but to keep things simple, we'll just mark everything as static. I'll do the same thing for outer walls. Uh, just note that my outer walls are inside an empty game object so when I mark those as static, I get a little warning saying, uh, or a little prompt asking me if I want to change the children uh, to the same status, and I'll say, I'll say yes. And so I have my ground cube marked as static. I have my exterior walls marked as static. Um, I'll select my interior walls and mark those as static as well. And once we have um, some static objects uh, referenced, and these could be terrain and, and other objects as well, uh, we can start to generate a nav mesh. So I'll do that by going to the window pull down menu and choosing the navigation window. I have mine already nested over here, hiding behind inspector. Um, and I'll select the grass, even though it, it's unnecessary uh, to do this, but I just wanna point out that as I kind of pick through these objects over here, you can see that it's highlighting the object that we have and telling us whether it's part of a, a, a navigation static or not. So I'll go back to the ground, even though it's going to um, accommodate anything that is marked as static. In order to generate a mesh, we'll go to the bake tab. And with bake tab selected, we can go down here and push the bake button. And it'll take a moment, um, but it'll generate a nav mesh based on all the things that are static in our environment. And so you can see, because we mark these, uh, both the exterior walls, I'll zoom in over here, you can see that we marked the exterior walls and the interior walls that generated this nav mesh. It's showing up as, as blue. I'll flip it on and flip it off. That's the, our nav mesh. And this is what's being used to calculate uh, navigable area. Okay, so that's the first step. We're gonna mark things as static over here. Uh, we're going to go to the navigation window and we're gonna bake our nav mesh. Now, if we wanna change this, so let's say that um, I'll just duplicate this object and move this over here and kind of rotate this. Um, we'll go back to our navigation. Uh, you can see that that is not being accounted for in the same way, even though this object, uh, well, I guess it's not, let's see. Let me make sure that I have it selected. There we go, well, um, it is static, uh, but when we go to navigation, it wasn't factored into our original bake. So if, we, if this is another static object and we wanna take that into account, all we need to do is because it's marked as static, we'll just hit bake again. And you can see that it adopts that now as part of the static mesh. 
So the enemy is the thing that I want to be able to wander around this navigation mesh. Uh, so we've established the mesh. The next thing that we'll do is we're gonna select the enemy AI. Uh, and the first step, I'll make sure that the inspector is revealed over here. Uh, we need to add a nav mesh agent to the enemy. And we'll do that by going to components, navigation, nav mesh agent. And this nav mesh agent, there's different criteria in here that we can set. Um, we can you know, take a look at this. If you need to read the documentation, just click on the little question mark over here. Uh, and it'll, it'll define all these different parameters. But um, what we'll do is we'll borrow uh, the first state of our enemy AI manager, and we'll use this state to declare uh, a destination along our nav mesh. And uh, we, we could set destinations a couple of different ways. We could use a vector three, so we could use a you know, 3D world position. Um, I'm going to use a game object and use that as our destination. And so I'm gonna create an object right now. I'll create a simple sphere. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, just kind of scale it down to half a meter. I'll make it red and we'll call this destination. And this is just kind of a little visual aid, um, that, like a little buoy that we can move around um, uh, and have our, our player move towards it. So that's destination. I am gonna turn off the sphere collider. We don't really need it um, and don't want to cause any, uh, any, any weird, weirdness here. Um, so I'm gonna take advantage of the, the nav mesh and nav mesh agent uh, through Playmaker. In order to do this, I need to download um, the, the pathfinding package for Playmaker. By default, it doesn't install. Uh, we can get that a couple of different places. You can get that through um, the uh, developer website, Tong Games. Just say uh, wiki or Playmaker wiki. Uh, and if we go to Tong Games and go the, to the wiki and go to add-ons, uh, from here, you can find Unity Pathfinding. Um, alternatively, what you could do is you could use the ecosystem, uh, which I have loaded in here. Um, that's a separate package. It doesn't come uh, default in Playmaker, but again, you just download it and activate it. Once you do, you can go to ecosystem and just type in Pathfinding. Uh, ecosystem is uh, third party, uh, it, or it's actually, you know, uh, a library of, of Playmaker actions and packages that are um, uh, put together and maintained uh, by the folks at, um, at uh, Playmaker or Hutong Games. And uh, so definitely check out the, um, the ecosystem. It's pretty, pretty user-friendly. But we're looking for the Pathfinder actions. And once we load the Pathfinder actions, uh, if we scroll down here, we should have two new categories we should have nav mesh and nav mesh agent. Um, because I've added a nav mesh agent to my player, um, I can then utilize the nav mesh agent actions to set a destination on this nav mesh agent. Okay, so I have my enemy AI selected. This is the same object that has a nav mesh agent. And what we'll do is I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to set a destination, but I'm gonna set a destination as a game object. I'll double click. And so we're setting this nav agent, its destination, so we're using the owner, and the destination will just drag in this destination object, okay? And at that point, as long as uh, we've established our destination, We'll hit the play button. I'll select my destination and you can see that um, the enemy is moving towards it. Okay, so uh, because we baked a nav mesh in here, uh, it's going to avoid, got a little bit of a glitch because we fell outside of our nav mesh agent logic. So in other words, if we go back to our enemy, we became aware of our player uh, and therefore we lost our, our, uh, our, our destination. But that's good, we'll take advantage of that here in a moment. So let me just reset that. Hit the play button again. I'll go to uh, my destination and we'll see if we can get this to navigate 
Oh, they became aware again. So let me let me just hide my player. Let's just, in fact, let's just get rid of them for a moment so we can continue to test this without further developing them. So we have our destination, and if we hide that behind these obstacles, you can see that uh, it's pretty intelligent. It can move around, flatten this view out, and we can just kind of hide it, and our enemy is constantly trying to get to our destination. Okay. So where we place that, uh, there it goes. We'll move this over here. See if we can get that to plow through. Okay, so that's working okay. So this will be the destination if the, the AI is unaware. We'll go back to the player and flip him back on for a moment. So we'll go back to enemy AI. We'll do the same thing. We'll set the destination agent if the uh, enemy becomes aware of the player. Let's do set destination as game object. And for now, we're just gonna hardwire the player uh, as the destination. So the result here is, select the destination here, hit the play button. Right now we're moving towards our destination because we're unaware. So we can select this AI and lock it here for a moment. We'll go back to destination. change my view here so it's getting a little disoriented okay but if we get close and we become aware of our player now we're aware it's no longer uh, it's no longer looking for uh, this uh, this destination okay we've been, become aware of the player and therefore that's our target that's what we're moving towards uh, now if we become unaware so if I take my player and I make sure that all this criteria is false, so I've hidden the player, it now moves back to uh, its unaware position. Now this is, uh, you know, semi-functional. Right now, you know, we're hiding the, the player is only semi-aware of, of us, right? It only has, I can go to the AI here and lock that in the inspector. Um, so it doesn't have field of view, it has line of sight, and it has range, but it does not have a uh, field of view. So we could set up different criteria to say, well, if it has two of these three things or has certain conditions met, it's going to behave a little bit different. So um, if it, uh, it's now become aware, so I got to hide and get out of, uh, get out of range. I got to do all three things. And so that's not the most, uh, not the best option, but it's testable and it works. Now we'll refine this um, a little bit more. Uh, now imagine a scenario where right now we have one destination. We have an unaware destination uh, and it's looking to uh, simply go to destination. But what if we had a grid of destination objects? So maybe we kind of scatter uh, three destination objects around and maybe during the unaware state um, we have it randomly select one of these game objects or we create a loop kind of off to the side here uh, that it's looping around uh, this unaware state kind of randomly selecting these um, these destination objects okay um, that would be one thing that we can do um, and then we can take the same kind of logic and say, well, okay, become aware of the player, but maybe become aware of the player kind of general areas around the player. Um, and so uh, we could, you know, really start to establish some more complex behavior. Or maybe we mark areas on the map that we determine are kind of high value strategic positions that if we want the uh, enemy to assume uh, a defensive position, maybe we select from... Uh, uh, a series of game objects that we've tagged uh, or categorized as kind of high value defensive positions uh, or we have another behavior that we just pursue the player um, if we want to take a more offensive approach so we can really kind of you know establish uh, different criteria uh, for this um, so but this is kind of the basic setup for uh, basic player AI I'll continue to push this forward and kind of do like a random wander between these uh, waypoints with a, a different side loop or maybe set up another state machine that kind of handles 
um, what the what the destination is. So separate um, the unaware and uh, the awareness out with um, uh, the you know a, a navigation manager for uh, the AI, or maybe it's uh, you know maybe it's embedded in the same um, AI kind of awareness. Um, but just a few things to think about. Uh, if you have any specific questions, you can always uh, contact me. Uh, lo likes and shares are always appreciated with these videos. Uh, I'll continue to push this forward and add a couple of other videos, kind of refining some stuff. Um, I do want to talk about the dynamic objects and making obstacles rather than baking things into NavMesh. We'll do uh, the randomness and we'll push this forward. Um, eventually, I'll do uh, independent health systems uh, and take control of the player to make this kind of a more dynamic environment. Um, also, uh, in the future, address um, some uh, projectile systems and, and uh, health manager systems and a couple of other things. So if there's uh, something, uh, some tips and tricks or some particular things that you want to see or uh, see some alternatives to this, uh, just uh, drop me a line. Enjoy and have fun.